Um, this week, um, I'm here today to preach to you today to, uh, to break the ice. Because this week I, I did not feel, I did not feel like I, I it, was, it was very hard to sit down and prepare a sermon for this week. Um, you know, everywhere I'd look, everywhere I see, I'd see my father and, you know, and think of my father and uh, just, you know, missing him and going through this, you know, early stage, you know, that we, uh, that we go through when we, when we lose a loved one, especially a father. And, and, and believe me, it was it's very hard, and, and it wasn't until yesterday when I began to think, because every time I think, uh, you know, it's, it, you can't, um, during this week, I just could not think of anything else. And any time I would sit down to, to put something together, you know, I could only think about my father. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's, I, I wanted to take the time to just thank this awesome church uh, the support that you have been for me during this time is just amazing. You guys have gone like way over the limit, way over the top, you know, and showing your, 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 your support. Uh, Sunday was great, uh, you know, seeing so many people that came out uh, to the funeral home. You know, the guy at the funeral home asked me if my father was a politician or if he was uh, somebody very famous, you know. Because, you know, the whole inside got packed, the entrance got packed, outside it was, and, uh, and, 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 and I said, no, he was better than that. And, uh, uh, you know, so it was, uh, it was amazing the support that you guys showed me uh, and my family. And then when we went home, our church went over there to serve my family. And it's just amazing. I mean, my family, people that didn't know who my church was, was just uh, amazing. You know, when you do something crazy like what I did to start in origin, you know, my family is, is uh, you know, second, third generation Adventists. So, you know, they look at you and they like doubt, you know, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You know, and, and you hope fine. But then when they see you guys and they see how you as a church are, and they, they're like, they're like, man, I mean, you're lucky. <laughs> all right. All right. You, you're doing good. Keep going. Keep going. You know, you know, things are going good, you know. And, and, and just to be able to see all of you, and I, I thank you so much for, for being that type of church. And uh, a lot of times I tell people, I said, you know, there's always the question, you know, how many members do you have? And I always say, I don't have members. I don't own anybody. I said, we're just a family. That's all we are. We're, we're a family, and we show it, and we show it. You know, we show it that we're a family. You know, we're here. We support each other. You know, we all go through, you know, we, know, we all go through the same thing. You know, I went through uh, yesterday a pastor who, who was, who's looking to start a church uh, down south. Uh, uh, you know, he was, um, he was talking to me. What are you guys doing? And, and this, and, and, you know, I mentioned to the point, we don't have membership. We don't keep a list of people. We don't own anybody. We just, people come to worship, and we're a family. We come to worship together. He couldn't, he couldn't grasp that concept. You know, you, you got to have them in a book, man. You got to know who they are. You know, I said, we know who they are. We know who we, we, know who we are. Uh, you know, and after that, he, was, he said, yeah, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I love that concept. But the thing is, is that people in difficult times like this, this is one of the reasons the church was created, so that we can be there for each other. You know, so that, so that we can help each other. Church is not just about coming, coming to church. You know, church has become a very popular thing where people just go to church and they, and they go, you know, I, I, I go to some of the largest churches here in town and, you know, and you, and you see the people come in, you know, they, they herd them in and they herd them out. You know, they sit, they watch a show and they go home and, and they, don't, they don't really know each other. They really don't build relationships. And, um, uh, you know, last Saturday, a lot of people doubted that I would come to church because, you know, what had just gone on with, with my father. But the thing is, I really do believe and I'm not saying this just to say it. I really do believe that you're my family. And, and, and there is no other place I would rather be than here in church. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of, if I'm hurting, I want to come to church. You know, uh, I, I want to come to church and I, and I want to be here with you. And this is, the, and I want all of you to feel the same way. You know, to feel the same way that this is a safe place for us to come to. You know, we have, we have seen how different people have, uh, 
uh, ha have, have come here to origin and have expressed from the pulpit struggles that they're going through in life. And what happens is that origin has become that place that people feel, feel comfortable, where people feel like no matter what's going on in their life, they're going to be accepted and loved. You know, and that's, that's what church, I, I really believe that's what church needs to be about. I want to talk to the mothers here a little bit. Please don't expect uh, the best out of me in the sermon. This week was not a time, so, um, but I said, you know, I was not going to preach, but I said, I got to preach because I got to break the ice. I need to do it, you know, and I'm the kind of person that when I'm, when I'm going through stuff, I got to step out. I just got to move. I have to move on. I can't stay stuck, you know, and, and this week has been hard for me, uh, it's just as it's been hard for my mother and my sister. Uh, my sister who was there for my dad the last two months, day and night, taking care of him. You know, it, it's, been, it's been hard for, for us. But, but the thing is, you cannot let anything, you know, anything keep you down because I know that's not what my father would have wanted. You know, every day, you guys wouldn't believe. I get to the house and if he, if he didn't come, he gets there. So how was church today? How many people did you have in church today? You know, he always wanted to find out. He always wanted to see origin go forward and move forward. Um, and I know that, you know, that's what, my, that's what he would want. And so, you know, and when I confront different situations, uh, my, my way of getting through it is to keep moving, keep moving, keep going, keep going. You know, life doesn't stop. Uh, you know, we, we have to drive through it. And, uh, and today I said, well, I'm going to preach, even if it's not going to be the best sermon in the world today, uh, but I got to preach. I got to do it. I got to stand up there and I have to preach uh, because I have to get past this. Uh, so today is, is a very special day because it's a day for our mothers, and our mothers have impacted us so, so much. And, and we live in a, in a time where being a mother is not really considered uh, the best thing in the world. You know, right now, uh, the women that are being exalted, the women that are being uh, uh, noticed, are women that are maybe all-stars out there in some sort of career, women that are politicians, women that are being seen. And a lot of times, that's where women look for success. And, you know, I want to tell women that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what, my, what I, a lot of times, I tell women is that, listen, there's nothing greater than to be a mother. You can be anything you want but you also have to be a mother. I'm sorry. You know, now, if, you, if I see a woman that says, I don't want to do that, that's no problem at all because no one is forced to have children. It's not a sin to not have children. And I think that it's a problem. We, when we as a church and, and, and as a pastor, I've learned to get away from this. You know, whenever you see, uh, you see couples only have one child, and you see church members, well, when's the next one coming up? That is none of your business. Oh, when are you going to have the next one? That's none of your business. If this, if this mother and this father decide that one child is what they can bring up right and be responsible for, they're making the right decision. And if, and, if, and if a woman decides that she says, you know, I want to be, I want to be a, a, this career, I want to be that, and I want to grow, and right now I don't want to be a, a mother, you know what? That is perfectly fine. But if you decide to have children, you better be a mother. Because remember, having children is a choice. Did you know that, woman? Maybe you didn't know that. And our young ladies here, you have to know that having children is a choice. And the problem is that sometimes women have children because all their friends are having children. Oh, and they see all the little cuties and they see the little baby showers and they want, oh, I want a baby shower too. Come on, honey, let's go. I want a baby shower. I want to get the attention. I want to go to church and have the baby dedication. And I want to, I want to walk into church and everybody's like, oh, my God, he looks so cute, you know. I, I want that. That's not the reason why you have children. To me, the greatest reason why we have children, we see it in, the, in, in 1 Samuel 1, 11, And she vowed when, 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 uh, when, when, um, 
Hannah says, and she vowed and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. In other words, this woman, she wanted a baby not to get a baby shower. She wanted a baby not because all of her friends had babies. Is because she wanted something to offer to the Lord. She wanted a, a, a baby that she could have her hand in it so that that child would become to serve God. And, and the idea of having children, it is a wonderful choice. And all the women and uh, all the women who decide to have children, God bless you, and you are special because you are taking on a large task. And you must understand the task of being a mother. You can't erase it. You can't change it. If you are a woman and you have had children... And, and maybe you say, I want a career, and I want this. That's okay. You can have your career. And you can have your career. You can do anything you want to. But the moment you have a child, you cannot give up the right of being a mother or the, or the responsibility of being a mother. You can't give it up. No matter once you have a child, you become, can become the president of the United States but you're still a mother, and the role of being a mother needs to be played out fully and completely. It doesn't matter. You chose to have a child. If you feel like, if, if a woman, if a young woman feel that that's not what they want to do, because they have other things, other goals in mind, there is no sin with that. You know, some people say that, Couples have to have a children. I'm against that. No, you don't. To me, having children, having children is the decision that you make between a man and a woman to have a child. And once you have that child, you have taken on, you not only have a child, you have taken on the responsibility of seeing that child through and to present that child be before the arms of God. Do you get it? The job of a mother cannot be re replaced. You cannot replace your responsibility with your child with the father. You can't. You can't do it. A mother is absolutely necessary just as is a father. And later on Father's Day, we'll exalt and we'll talk about fathers, but today's Mother's Day. You can't you can't give up. Mothers, you are crucial. You are important people. You have so much. The love of a mother, just the love of a mother. You don't have to be this wise and great mother, but the love of a mother, the support of a mother, the love of a mother, the acceptance of a mother, of a, of a mother accepting and loving their child, what you do to that child psychologically, it's incredible and, and, it, and it's one of the most important things that a human being can receive is the love and acceptance of a mother. It's what makes a person complete. And without it, without the love of a mother, is what makes a lot of psychologists very rich people. But if we were to grow up as children with the love of a mother and the love of a father, you would see how much less divorces we would have. You would see how psychologists wouldn't have as many clients as they do. Because when people grow up and, and children grow up, without the love and acceptance of a mother, something will be lacking in that person's life. A lot of people this week have been ta talking to me 
and tell him, Pastor, I wonder, you know, how you feel, what's going on, you know, how you look strong, you look like you're not, you know. And I tell him, I said, listen, I, there is pain. There is pain in here. I, I think this week that now a minute didn't go by that I would think about my father. But I said, but let me tell you something. My pain is not harmful. Because the pain that I have is because there was love between me and my father. He loved me and I loved him. That pain is not harmful. Now, what about, I said, now, if, if, if I didn't have a father, if my father had abused me, if my father hurt me, now that's pain that is harmful to the human being. But pain because I miss him, pain because I love him, that does nothing to me. And I don't mind thinking about it. I don't try to forget it. Oh, you have to try and forget it. No, I don't want to try and forget it. I love thinking about my father. Because that pain does not cause damage. Now, the pain that causes damage is when kids are growing up in a home where either the mother or the father is not carrying out their responsibility. You can be anything you want. I am not opposed to women being in careers or achieving things. That, there is no problem with that. What I'm saying is you must figure out a way to do whatever you're going to do, and you must be a mother also. You can't give that up. The minute you decided to have a child, you chose that. And you can't give it up. Because that child is going to need you. And that child will not grow up normal if it doesn't receive the love and acceptance of a mother. He will have problems in his marriage. He or her will have problems in their marriage. He or her will have problems even raising up their children because they had nobody show them how to bring up children. And, they, and, they, and it begins a chain. It begins a, this chain reaction that continues on. I was reading uh, uh, something this week, and this, and this little boy, his mom tells him to go take a nap. And she goes, you know, every time she gets tired, I'm the one who ends up taking a nap. And uh, as mothers, mothers get tired. Because being a mother, it, it's hard. It's hard. I remember uh, the love of a mother is, is incredible because mothers never stop loving you no matter what. It's part of the most unconditional love that exists. In fact, God, God, God's love is compared to the love of a mother. I remember in my youth, Coming in at three or four o'clock in the morning, walking into my house, and my mother sitting in the sofa right there waiting for me. Now, my idea was it would have been great if my mother would have gotten up, gotten a chair, and hit me over the head with it. That would have been great. Because then I would have had a reason to leave the house. I'd gotten all mad. Then I like I'd get mad, you know. I would walk in, and my mother would say, I mean, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and you say, son, I'm glad you're home. Your Bible and your Sabbath school lesson is next to your, your bed. Good night, and she'd like the bed. You know how I walked in, I'm like, oh. <laughs> what, what parents and what mothers willing to do. And you see, my mother never gave me a reason to walk out. 
if I would ever leave church, if I would ever do anything, it wasn't because of what she did. It, it was going to just be something that I decided. Parents, mothers, don't give your children a reason to not come to church. Don't give them a reason to not love God. Give them every reason possible to love God. Because what happens is that our children, or neither you or I, or our children will never see God. But they will see you. It goes to something else that I want to talk about, mothers. When mothers look at their responsibilities, they look at their responsibilities a lot of times of giving their children a lot of love. Giving children love, giving the children acceptance, helping them with their homework, uh, you know, being with them, spending time with them, playing with them. And they see all these things as important for them to, to be a good mother. A good mother is one who does that. I want to change that a little bit today. And I want to also say that a good mother is also one who takes time for herself with God. Because you can't give what you don't have. And a lot of times mothers are so involved into, into giving to their husbands, giving to their children, and they give and they give all the time and they forget that they, they must also recharge. And, and, and being a mother requires so much wisdom and requires so much from you that you must have an intimate relationship with God. Mothers, I, mothers I, I, you must have. Time with God. And, and if you don't have time with God, you're leading your children with your own common sense. And leading your children based on your own common sense is very dangerous to their health. In the world that we live in today, more than ever, parents... Father, I'm a father's also, but here I'm, I'm, today's about you moms, right? So I don't want you that in the sermon, well, pastor, what about father? It ain't about you today. Mothers, you must spend time in the word of God. You must spend time on your knees because what God expects from you is, 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 is big. And the reason why sometimes we can't guide our, ch our children to Jesus is because we're not there ourselves. You can't tell people to go where you haven't been. And what happens is that our children are looking at you. And I know if you've heard me say this a million times, moms, you're not your children's friend. You are their mom. Stop trying to be like your kids. Moms, stop trying to compete with your daughters and how good you look. Mom, stop flirting with men in front of your children. Men, women, moms, stop that. Become mom. You are a mother. Be a mother. Your children can have friends all around, and they have many friends but they only have one mother. And they're looking at you, and that's why your, your, your relationship with Jesus, your love with Jesus, you, you must have that time alone so that, that, so that God can speak through you. So that God can speak through you to your children, and God will speak through you to your children, not through, not through just your words, God will speak through you to your children with your actions in the way that you behave. Your children are observing every act that you do. And, and, you know, anybody around the street, anybody in the neighborhood can say or do anything. But when you as a mother say something or do something, it, it is a great impact in your children. The minute you do it. If you drink alcohol, your children will always think that it's okay to drink alcohol. 
If you do certain things in groups of people and in places, your children would think that that is okay. Anybody can do it and it won't affect them. But the minute that you do it, in their mind, a bell rings and says, it's okay to do it. So if you say, well, I got to live for myself. I don't live for my children or anybody else. Well, guess what? Then you, you made a wrong mistake in, 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 in having children because when you become a mother, you are going to live for your children. All I'm trying to say is that mothers, your impact on your children will be life lasting. It's essential to what kind of people they become. It's essential to what kind of, a, what kind of marriages they will have. It's essential if they are going to be successful in their marriage or not. If you're, most of the reason why most people fail in their marriages is because of their lack of having a good mother or a good father, but today we're just concentrating on mothers. The lack of a good mother will affect the marriage of your children and their grandchildren and their children. You understand? Every action is important. We cannot take a break. <laughs> Mothers and parents cannot take a break and act stupid. Because your stupidity will be ingrained in their brains. Anybody else's stupidity will not do anything or affect your children, but your stupidity will. It will affect them. This is something that cannot be taken lightly because mothers and fathers and, you know, mothers again for today are, you are the ones that God has placed children in your hands so that they can become everything that he wants them to be. But how can, how can your children become everything that God wants them to be when you don't know God yourself? How can, how can you look at your children and see gifts and abilities in them and then be able to guide them within those gifts and abilities if you're not connected with God, for God to use his spirit and to let you see in your children what nobody else sees. Do You see, our children are brought up into this world for a purpose. I mean, before they are born, they already have a purpose that God has for them. And then now God communicates that purpose through parents who go on their knees and have a relationship with God. God communicates them. The parent also sees these gifts and abilities. You're able to see things in your children through the power of the Spirit that nobody else does. And you can now begin to guide your children in a certain path. What path are you guiding your children towards? What is that path? And, and, and that path that we lead our children through can only, can, can only happen if we, as, as, as mothers, as mothers, you need a relationship with, with God because your, your walk is tough. Your responsibility is hard. And it's a lot. I'm 54 years old. And I still think about what my mother taught me, what she does and what she says and the little words that she say. They still impact my life and they're still important to me. That is never going to go away. A mother must understand what type of success you want to convey to your children. You need to be careful that your success is not just material. 
that you will be proud of your children when they reach spiritual success also. And that they will strive for spiritual success. And that their relationship with God is more important than anything else. If you're a soccer mom who's out there taking the kids to all these games, but you don't tell them to spend time spent, you know, in the word of God, you have let the world tell you what success is. If you're more important in your child's sports than you are in his spiritual life, you have eaten up what the world has given you. You must let your children know that the first area that they need to be successful in is on their knees in their relationship with God. And when you teach them that, when you teach them that, Everything else will be led by God and everything will be right because they will be connected. Mothers, you must introduce yourself. You must introduce your children to your counselor, which is Jesus Christ. You must take them to your counselor. You must take them to your guide. You must take them to your leader. You must take them to your Lord. But if he's not your Lord, you can't take them there. Build character. Build character in your children. Build character. That there are children who, who, who know what's right and what's wrong and will be willing to stand for what's right no matter what. Let your children know that you don't have the last word. Did you get that? Let your children know that you don't have the last word. That you are led by God. And that he has the last word. And that he has the authority. And what I'm telling you, and you can tell your children, what I'm telling you, I am telling you this because that's what the word of God says. And that's where God wants you to go. And let your children know that when you speak, you speak because you have been in touch with, with a higher authority. And that your words are not just the words of your mother, of a human being, that your words are words that come from God. And letting, her, letting them know that you have a higher authority. Be consistent. Be consistent. One of the things that is funny, a lot of times in church, and I observed this my whole life, is that I've seen adults criticize certain things about church or things that people do until their children grow up and they start doing the same thing. Now it's okay. Have you guys seen that a lot sometimes? They criticize stuff about children. And all of a sudden, when their children start doing it, 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 it's okay. Consistency in your children is that right is right and wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who, do it, who does it. And your children were sometimes going to come up and do something. And you say, son, uh, or, 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 or my daughter, you're old enough. You're going to do this thing. And it is still wrong. Don't try to make me understand and change my ways on the something is right. No, it isn't. It's still wrong. I don't care who does it. And, and you love them and you kiss them and you let them know that you accept them no matter what. But still, wrong is wrong. Don't confuse your children. Just because they choose to do something wrong, don't now tell them that it's okay. And, and you're going to love them anyway, but they need to grow up knowing what's right and what's wrong. And ultimately, they will find out too that that's wrong. But that consistency... And, and the results of that consistency, you're not going to see it at 13, 14, 15. The results of that consistency, you're going to see it when they're 30 and 40. Moms, I have something for you. Let me tell you something, moms. Do you know that your children grow up? Do you know that your children become adults? Okay? Your children become adults. I have a little secret for you that sometimes people don't know. Your children grow up 
and they become adults and they start thinking like adults. So when you as a mom do not do things right with your children when they are little, when they're 35 or 40, they look at you and say, I can't believe you let me do that. Remember that. One thing that my kids hear from me all the time and the hurt is that we're little, I said, listen, I'd rather you hate me now and love me later than love me now and then hate me later when you get old and you know what you're doing. How many adults are struggling and they look back and they tell me, Pastor, when I was little, my parents, they let me do this, they do my, you know, and, and look, what that's, look what it's made me now. And yet when they were little, like their mom was their hero. Oh my God, she loved them because they let them do anything they wanted. And what was wrong, they never told them, listen, that's wrong. That consistency is important. What's wrong, it's wrong. What's right, it's right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you're not going to love them. I, I want you, you, you need to differentiate between the two. My kids can't do anything that will stop me from loving them. There's nothing they can do. I will love them no matter what. No matter what they do, what they go through, what they put themselves into, I will love them the same, but wrong is wrong and right is right. And I will tell them to their face. And I will tell them, you made this decision. One of the things I love about my, my, my dad, my dad was, he would see me doing something that he didn't agree with. And he would repeat this conversation many times with me. <laughs> Son, what you're doing here is wrong. And he'd give me all the points why it's wrong. And then he'd say, I'm telling you this one time and one time only. And maybe some of you have heard me have that conversation with some of you. I'm telling you this one time and one time only. I'm never going to talk to you about this again. And my father would do that. He, he, my father would not nag. He would not nag. He would tell you one thing once. After that, you do whatever you want. He'll love me the same. He'll take care of me the same, whatever. But he'll say, but you will never say nobody told you. Some parents, to get their children to love them and to not be upset at them, don't tell them what they got to tell them. That's your job. You got to be, who's going to tell them then? Because they don't want their children to be mad at them. Let me tell you something. If you're a parent who's not willing for your children to be mad at you, then you don't know what you're doing as a parent. You can be upset at me if you want. <laughs> I'm all right. You got to eat tomorrow. You know, you're going to need a ride somewhere. You got to get in the car with me. Simple as that. You're going to have to get over it. But I'm not bending. You're going to have to get over it. And, and that is something that it, it's it's uh, that we must. That consistency. That consistency that that we that our that our children are are brought up in a home. Let me tell you, our children are going to make their own decisions. They believe it or not, they're real human beings. They're not you. They're, they're they're real for real. They're real human beings. I promise you. With their own characteristics, their own abilities to make up their mind, all that kind of stuff. but they must be brought up with clarity with no shady areas with what's right and what's wrong. 
And they may do a lot of wrong things. You're going to love them the same thing. But every time they do that wrong, they need to comprehend and have a complete understanding that what they're doing is unacceptable. It is wrong. And they will have to, they, they will have to you know, receive the fruits of that. I, I, I made up. I made up this phrase this week. Hey, you know what I mean? I, I'm always making up these phrases. And the phrase that came up the, a couple weeks ago was that excuses excuse you, but don't excuse the consequences. Excuses only excuse you, but don't excuse the consequences. You can have the best, best excuse in the world for not doing something. And, and I, okay, great, you know. You know, you, you, uh, you, know, you, get, you get to go into the hospital, your tire blows up. You know, you get to the doctor's office two hours later, and you're like, hey, you know, my tire blew up. You know, that's a heck of an excuse. It's a great excuse, but the doctor's gone already. You get it? A good excuse never excuses the consequences. It only excuses you as a person. The problem that we have today is that, is that sometimes we teach our children that a good excuse is enough. A good excuse does nothing. It only excuses you, but it doesn't excuse the consequences. If the praise team... They all together all have the same flat tire Saturday morning. And they don't show up to church and say, call me pastor, we had a flat tire. It's a great excuse, but guess what? We ain't having praise that day. We're not having praise that day. Children must be taught and understood that excuses never excuse a consequence. Once you do something, you're going to reap the consequences of that no matter how good your excuse was for not getting it done. That's life. And the problem that we have, even as, as adults, is that when we, we get the idea that when we don't do something, when we don't accomplish something, the whole world needs to forgive us, and, and it's like erase and do over. No, there is no erase and do over in life. There is no erase and do over in life. When you screw up, no matter for what the excuse was, it's still the consequences are going to happen. And we need to be real with our children and be able to, to, to let them know that. Reading the Bible, most interesting thing that we see these women who could not have children and God used them to bring great children into this world like Hannah that we've read about today. Like, uh, like Rachel, like Rebecca, like these women who could not have children because God wanted to let them know that those men who were born from those women were born because God gave it to them. Mothers understand that your children were given to you by God. I don't care which way which way they come to you. Last, uh, um, I don't know, we, we had our first men's meeting at, at, at the office was made by a friend who came by here. His name is uh, Jason. And, and he, was, he was incredible. I wanted to bring him because of his story, and a lot of the women here did not listen to his story. Jason, who's now a man of God or serving God in, 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 you know, in, in so many ways and is doing so many things right, and he, when he told me how he came into this world, I'm like, wow. See, his mother, his mother was actually raped as a young woman. And she became pregnant of that as a, as a result of that rape. And that's where he comes from. Never knew his father. Then his mother died at nine years old. And then he lived with his, grandpa, his grandparents, whose mother was an alcoholic, and his, his dad was always away. And you look at now the man that he's become, and how God has guided them, 
him there. You know, you look back and you say, you know, how does anything like that happen out of a rape? The result of this kind of man. And it lets you know that anybody who is born into this world, God has a plan for them. Somehow, somewhere, God is aware and God gives you a mission and there is a reason why you're here. And mothers, you have a great part in making that child what God wants them to be. What God wants them to be. So today as we finish, in today's world, in today's world, women, be whatever you want. You can be anything you want. Anything you want. You, become, you can become the president of the United States. Women, you can become anything you want. But if you have children, you have to be a mother. If you have children, you have to be a mother. And never give up that responsibility. It's a beautiful responsibility. You have the privilege of, of creating great men and women. Great men and women who can serve God. And you are serving God by helping them become everything that God wants them to be. May God bless you. And may God bless you as mothers and, and give you the strength that you need. It takes so much strength to be a mother. So much strength to be a mother. And you need it. And today we, we pray for you. I want to today just pray for you mothers. Uh, if wherever you're at, if you could stand, I'd like to pray for you. That God would give you the strength, that God would give you the wisdom to not only be a mother, but to become godly women. Godly mothers. Godly mothers who will always uh, uh, lead their children in the right path. Godly mothers who will always guide your children correctly. God, godly mothers who will give your children wisdom. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for giving us the mothers that you have given us. We thank you for giving us the ability to have these beautiful mothers. And today I ask that you may bless them. That you may give them the strength that they need. That you may, Lord, give them the wisdom from heaven. Not only the smarts of this world, but to give them the wisdom to accomplish the things that you want them to accomplish. You have put children before their presence. You have given them your special gift. And Lord, sometimes it's so hard to carry it out. But I ask that you may bless them and give them the strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.